Hello, I am Alexander Kotsikov, and in this story I will talk about the reasons for the poor work of the LNG plant in Norway near the town of Hammerfest. In fact, it is about the engineering fiasco the German company Linde at this plant. This is one of the largest companies in the market of cryogenic equipment and technologies. Linde was the APC contractor and the manufacturer of the part of the plant's main technology equipment. It was through the fault of Linde that the plant worked for many years with low productivity, often stopped for repairs and replacement of equipment, and it got colossal losses. Now about all this in more detail. The first and so far the only major European LNG plant is located beyond the Arctic Circle on the island of Milkoya, Norway. Sometimes this plant called by Snow White, according to the same nature gas deposit name from which it comes. The design capacity of the plant is 4.3 million tons LNG per year, but actual performance has approached to this only in recent years. At this plant, operated by the Norwegian state-owned company Statoil, a new technology of liquefied nature gas, a cascade cycle on mixed refrigerants, was used for the first time in the world. This technology, developed by Linde in the alliance with Statoil 20 years ago, was estimated by developers as the best in the world in terms of specific energy consumption. In the cycle of pre-cooling, liquefaction and subcooling of nature gas, various mixed refrigerants were used. To drive compressors, developers used electric motors. Compressed mixed refrigerants were cooled by sea water. Additionally, liquid turbines were used. All this together should have to give a great economic effect in the cold climate of Norway. However, everything went completely different. Startup of the plant was in August 2007, but already in November it had to be stopped. The cause was the leakage of sea water in heat exchangers. Linda used shell and tube heat exchangers with deflectors that were not perpendicular to the pipes, as in conventional apparatus, but under varying angles to cool the mixed refrigerants after compression, to cool natural gas, and to condense the propane ethane mixture in the precooling cycle. The twist of the shell side flow led to increase in the heat transfer coefficient and a decrease in the overall dimensions and weight of the apparatus. Another feature of the sea water shell and tube apparatus designed at the plant in Hammerfest was that they had titanium tubes with external fins. Titanium works well in sea water, but the contact place between deflector and the tubes had been poor design. Vibration appeared in these places at high velocity of dense gas, which quickly led to abrasive thinning of the pipe wall and the appearance of leaks. In December 2007, 80 leaky tubes were found in one of the heat exchanges, through which a large volume of sea water entered the coolant system. There were several plant stops for the repair of defective heat exchanger in the first year of operation, and this could continue for a long time. It was decided to replace these devices with more reliable designs. Two heat exchanges were replaced in 2008 and four more in 2009. The question of the last heat exchanger, namely condenser of propane ethane mixture, was decided later. The problem of this condenser was not only defective tubes, but also its low efficiency. Wall temperature measurements along its length at, at different angles along the circumference of the hull at various heat loads have been performed to determine the causes of poor work. As a result, it was found that in most of the intertubular space of this apparatus, the so-called differential condensation occurred. After passing approximately one-third of the length of the apparatus and condensation of a part of the stream, its motion became stratified. The steam didn't mix with the liquid and there was more ethane in its composition. The propane-enriched liquid flowed below and was poorly cooled. The overall efficiency of the condenser was low and didn't allow providing the plant design capacity. The condenser of propane and ethane was the largest apparatus of this type in the world. The number of tubes in it was about 11,000 and during operation they also leaked. To repair the condenser the plant had been stopped four times and more than a hundred separate pipes were muffled. The heat exchanger was replaced by similar apparatus in 2011. The arrangement of the deflectors was changed and the blow of line of an uncondensed gas with an increased cross-section area was installed therein. However, the south of the plant's problems in Hammerfest were not only seawater heat exchanges. Braised aluminum plate fin heat exchanges manufactured by Linde for the pre-cooling unit poor work too. The main technological streams of the plant, natural gas and all three streams of mixed refrigerants were cooled in these heat exchanges. It turned out that large temperature gradients arise in the cross-section of these apparatuses, which could lead to their destruction. A design error that didn't ensure an even distribution 
distribution of steam and liquid through separate channels of the apparatus was the reason for the poor performance of the Linde braised aluminum heat exchanges. All plate fin heat exchanges were replaced with new ones in 2009, and there are no claims for their work after replacement. In addition to plate fin heat exchanges, Linde manufactured a spiral wound liquefier and a liquefied natural gas subcooler for the Hammerfest plant. Several tubes bricks occurred in these heat exchanges during the operation of the plant. They were drowned out, but the apparatuses didn't replaced. The final scale-up recast of the spiral wound heat exchanges was completed in 2014. The purpose of this work was to equalize the temperatures in the cross sections of the heat exchanges in order to achieve design performance. There were no LNG plants in the world yet in which had to replace 90% of the mine technology heat exchanges during the first years of operations, as well as a large number of wells and other equipment. The founder of the company, great innovator Karl von Linde, would be very upset if he find out what mistakes his company engineers had done in the 21st century. Snow White in trouble, the catastrophe, Statoil loses billion, as the Norwegian media describes the situation at the LNG plant in Hammerfest. Such epithets became clear when it comes to the financial losses of the plant. Estimation of losses for the period from the moment of commissioning of the plant in 2007 until 2014, in which the latest recasting of the Linde technological scheme were made, gives a truly catastrophic picture. All 4.3 million tons of LNG per year was intended for export, and four gas carriers were built at the shipyards of Japan for its transportation. The volume of LNG in each gas carrier was 145,000 cubic meters, and its weight is about 67,000 tons. Thus, that was supposed to sell at least 64 gas carriers every year. But only in December 2010, Linda announced the shipment of the 100th gas carriers from the plant of Hammerfest. At that time, more than three years passed since the opening of the plant, and the number of shipments during this time should be twice as large. Loss of the plant in Hammerfest for the first three years amounted to more than 6 million tons of LNG. Further losses can be estimated from the data of the International Gas Union Service, which publishes data of the LNG export. This diagram shows Norway LNG exports data from 2011 to 2014 and comparative figures for plant and actual production. Total losses of the plant for seven years of operation amounted to 10.5 million tons of LNG and exceed $5 billion, taking into account the European and Asian markets average spot price. The total loss figure will be about $6 billion when summarized the cost of LNG and unproduced condensate and LPG. The situation with losses is aggravated by the fact that now, when the plant works at close to design capacity, the market value of LNG is much lower than in the period from 2008 to 2014, when the plant worked with frequent stops and low productivity. Another trouble for the plant in Hammerfest due to poor Linde heat exchanges were environmental issues. Because of the stops for repairs and during periods of decline in productivity, the plant had to burn huge amounts of natural gas, which led to a significant increase in carbon dioxide emissions compared to project values. Personally, I first encountered the Linde heat exchanges poor performance 14 years ago. These were braised plate fin apparatuses for a large air separation plant. Because of the error of the Linde calculations, the heat exchanges had insufficient surface and didn't provide design parameters. Even then, I had doubts about the competence of the specialists of this company. The failure of Linde at Hammerfest plant as well as the plate fin heat exchanger accident, which occurred recently in polyolefin plants, confirm Linda's serious problem in the design process itself. I believe that this video will allow to better assess the risks to companies that have not yet suffered from the use of Linda heat exchanges. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.